Now, this I, I thought was interesting, and I agree with this, and I'm going to bring up a different example. On the core, the playoffs, and the lack of success mm -hmm. therein. In True Living's view, his core just needs to keep knocking on the door. Quote, I need you to hear this. I look at those Red Wings teams, he said. I talked to Steve Eiserman, and he said at 27-28, I was the guy who could never win. I won at 30, right? It was a long time coming. So you've got to keep hammering away. Now, obviously, it's under different circumstances. There is no cap. Detroit was a high-spending team even back then, right? Mm -hmm. But if you look at Mario Lemieux's career, Mario Lemieux was 24 or 25 before he even made the playoffs. Mario Lemieux and the Pittsburgh Penguins were bad. They were bad when he showed up. He was great. They continued to be bad, and they were bad until he was almost Austin Matthews' age. So I agree with that. Now, I don't necessarily agree with all the things that they've done around it, but I agree with that. And then the last one, and this is where it kind of plays into it, on scoring outside of the top four, because what happens in the playoffs, guys? Mm -hmm. You shut down Marner, you shut down Matthews, you shut down Tavares, you shut down Nylander, the Leafs don't win. And Brad Treliving watched the Leafs play last year and said, here's how they got to win. They got to get secondary scoring. And that is why he signed guys like Tyler Bertuzzi and Max Domi, who have both been very good playoff performers in their careers. Yep. And have emerged. Bertuzzi was unfathomable to start the season. It was bad. He's, he's emerged. He's officially in there as a secondary scorer. So what do we think? Of well, the quotes. The thought processes. I really like the NCAA one. Um, I mean, the thought process, I could have told you that. I mean, yeah, you better fucking get production out of Bertuzzi and Domi, who you spent $8 eight million. Half, dollars. Yeah. yeah, a million dollars on. But um, the thought process behind it was interesting because mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, when you go, you look at um, last year's playoff roster, mm -hmm. who were the Leafs going to get secondary scoring from? Uh, their completely new line of Achari, O'Reilly, and Nyes. Completely new line. Completely new. So that's that's interesting. Yeah. You got guys like Kerfoot, who was paid $3.5 million, more than Domi. Overtime winning uh, I know. goal scorer. I know, but not great on secondary scoring overall. Generally, no. Right? Right. And then their fourth line was who? Uh, Well, Engvall was in there. Oh, well, wait, he was no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. Uh, their fourth line was a mix of guys. It was Kampf, Aston Reese, uh, Lafferty, Lull, and uh, I know those three were together for at least part of it. Yeah, yeah. So, and just for reference, O'Reilly had nine points in eleven playoff games. Oh my god, man, he was good. Uh, he was good. <laughs> Matthew Nyes had four and seven, uh, and then there you get the drop off of everybody putting up like three points. And this but, year they got Connor Dewar. Um. They showed up in that Tampa series. They, they did. That was a good series. It they, was. They, they got I, outplayed. The Leafs got outplayed every game. Yeah. Yes and no. I think most games they got outplayed and Sammy Bale. I think they, they were in every game, which is all you got to be. Yeah. They pulled out four. Yeah. <laughs> which is all, all, all they yeah. got to do. Which is something Agreed. they didn't do for two decades. And they won it. Yes. They won it. Did any Leaf fan give a shit? No. I'm just that saying. Tampa outplayed them. I'm, the deserve to win a meter was rarely in the Leafs' favor. And believe me, I don't give a shit about the deserve to win a meter. Um, and it's interesting. When that, when that first came out, people were like, this is God. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I remember somebody tweeted it at me. I'm like, well, I'm glad they deserve to win mm, because good. they didn't. But I'm glad. And people were like, what's wrong with you? You're stupid. You don't like advanced stats. And I was like, okay. And then, you know, a couple years on, it's nice to see that it's a stats thing. That's nice. Doesn't make me feel better. Yeah. All right. It's a, it's a fun tool. <laughs> it's a cool tool for sure. Adam, to, to earlier in the show, about 20 minutes ago, where she did the, if we were still back on radio and this time it was a sports show and you led the the top of the hour with, hey, is, is Mitch Marner earning money on his contract? You know, that that's the topic there. To add fuel to that, um, last playoffs, Mitch Marner was second in the team in ice time amongst everybody. So including defensemen, he had 24 minutes and eight seconds of average ice time. How many uh, points did he have, Jess? Uh, he had 14 points, which led the team in the playoffs. How many so, points after the first three games did he have? I don't have that That's, in front of me. So, so when people quote me that stat, mm -hmm. uh, Mitch Marner is undoubtedly a very, oh, very, I can tell um, you. very important player for the Toronto Maple Leafs in the playoffs. And it's something that I want you to watch because 
I've never been certain that the way Mitch Marner plays in the regular season translates to the playoffs mm-hmm. uh, because he when he when Mitch Marner decides to drive drive the net, he's actually really good at it. I, I know. Just, I just don't ever see it enough because he's a pass first guy, and he could shoot and he could he's got all the tools. We we all know Mitch Marner's super talented. Jesse, can you give me the readout of his points? Sure. Uh, yeah, after the first four games in the Tampa series, so everything beyond that, Mitch Marner had three points. You're not going to win. And it's it's curious. You're no, not going to win. This adds to the conversation of how important Mitch Marner is to the team. Well, when the one game they won. Win if he's not if he's not scoring. The one the game one. they won against Florida, Mitch Marner had a goal and an assist. When he struggled and he had three points in, what is that, six games, they lost four of those games. This is what I'm Mitch Marner is very important to this team. And and, and by the way, Sam, yeah, he better be. He Sam, makes eleven million dollars. Sam goes for Matthews and Neil Andrew Tavares. But my point in in the Mitch Marner conversation is, I actually didn't think he had a great playoff last year. I think he had four good games, mm. maybe five, four and a half. Mm. I don't think. Listen, man, we're and and it, and it, and I said the same thing against Montreal, and I got a, little, a lot of shit for this there too. Mitch is so vitally important, and he's so talented. What I want to see from him is the stuff that I saw when he was scoring in the Tampa series. I, I and the won't... stuff that I saw was him driving yeah. against Florida. And I grant you, Florida is a much tougher physical team. And Matthew Nyes got, you know, torpedoed and all those things. I get it. I get it. But if the Leafs are going to win in the playoffs this year, that player, that player more than anybody else, Nylander produces in the playoffs. We know this. Matthews, except if Phil Deneau is stapled to him, <laughs> performs in the playoffs. Tavares scores overtime goals to get you to the second round. He's done that twice now for two sorry-ass franchises. Sorry-ass. I, I think this, the, the road does run through Mitch, and it's more than just what he brings to the penalty kill, which is considerable. Mm-hmm. We need Mitch Marner scoring evenly throughout the playoffs. I think there's something to be said for the game doesn't translate to the playoffs because it is a different, it's different hockey. Can, can I break the conversation down as a cynic? Mm-hmm. The $11 million player needs to perform. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, more, but he I, did, but people will say, if you just look at that stat line, it's pretty nice. Led the team in points during the playoffs. Yeah, all but, that stuff. But there's more to it than that. Right. We already have access to uh, what was the set that was going around? It was like him in the first four games of a playoff series versus games five, six, and seven. Mm-hmm. Like we are, we have that information. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. Um, again, this this <laughs> I say this every year. Listen, if they win, holy shit, you did it! Holy shit, you were right. We were all ready to blow it up multiple times, and you friggin' did it! Congrats to you and only you, because we have little faith, and you have all the faith, and you did it. They lose in the first round, or even second. You you have to take a a a nuclear bomb to this core. Yeah, that's enough. And I and and so with. And you're right. Yeah. Oh, so I, I don't think he's bad. I didn't say he's bad. The other thing that I love the about the setup it, doesn't work. The, the, right. Yeah. And it's not. And again, that doesn't go back to Mitch Marner's fault or Austin Matthews or William Nylander or John Tavares. It's we're putting too much pressure on four players. It's the allocation of the money in a salary cap system. Look at the Winnipeg Jets and what they have done with Blake Wheeler's contract off the books and what they got back for uh, Pierre Luc Dubois. And not doubling down on Pierre Luc Dubois, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They they got Gabe Velarde, they got Al- Alex Iofalo. I know that Velarde's out with the enlarged spleen. But when he was in, wow, what a factor. Iofalo, what a factor. And you're going, so, you know, one of the arguments about the Mitch Marner thing, and I bought into this for a long time, and it's not just Mitch, by the way, it's Nylander, it's Matthews, everybody, is, okay, so you're going to take that $11 million. What are you going to do with it? You don't have that player. You won't have a guy with that skill set. Mm-hmm. insert core four member here like five more players what would you do <laughs> and i think that's going back to steve's point which is i have four quarters in this cost a do- or i have three quarters in this cost a dollar mm-hmm. meaning that when one of those quarters is injured it makes it very difficult to find two dimes and a nickel to to plug that gap and that's what i'm looking out for in this playoffs and by the way if you're a leaf fan or a or an observer at very least and you think right now that this can't be done, all the evidence in the world supports that, right? Uh, if you t- forget, forget fandom for a second, and I know that's really hard. 
if if you forgot if you betray the team and go I don't know if it can work what evidence would you have that it can in the playoffs beyond a lucky guess <laughs> right so if it works this Listen, year I'm not well gonna shit hold, it worked I'm not going to hold it against you that you've been wrong every year since 2017 like just you know yeah it's listen i want them to win dude i hitched my wagon to the shit do you know how mm, tasty mm, that youtube revenue would be mm, if the leafs did the thing for god's sake if they lost in four games yep. in the conference final yeah <laughs> do you know what that would do they win two lousy series and then get pumped. Do you know what that would do? How bad I want that and how bad we need that. Mm -hmm. I want it to happen. I just, what, you're either asking me to tell you what I think or asking me to lie to you. I'm just, so, so I think it's fair to be like, I'm concerned. Right. I think it's fair to be, I'm excited. I think it's fair to say as a fan, I don't care about the evidence. I'm a fan. Rah, 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 go Leafs. All that's fair. What I am looking for objectively as I can, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm a Leaf fan, is can these guys, and I've seen Matthews do it, and I've seen Nylander do it, and I've seen Tavares do it. I'm looking for all four of them to do it throughout. I'm looking for all. It's, by the way, Nathan McKinnon. Nathan McKinnon, oh, Colorado Avalanche. Oh, Adam. If Nathan McKinnon went four out of five games without scoring, <laughs> are the Avs going to win? Probably, probably not. Probably Adam. not. Yeah. That doesn't happen to Nathan McKinnon. Bingo. Yeah. 